Okay, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have a really, really cool review that I'm very excited to share with you guys. This is the Crafter Blue Diver, the Hyperion Ocean, guys. So Crafter Blue, of course, they're out of Hong Kong. They're established back in 2015. And I was actually, I'm pretty proud to say that I'm one of the first channels to actually review them. Uh, they uh, Their main bread and butter has been aftermarket professional grade rubber dive straps, and now they're offering actual full wrist watches, guys. Um, so really cool to kind of see that archetype of, okay, they made, you know, really amazing and affordable uh, rubber watch straps, dive straps, to say, hey, let's go ahead and put together a whole watch. And what does that look like? And and what's what are we going to pay homage to? What are we going to add our own spin on, our own take? So really, really cool, um, especially considering, I mean, at this point, Crafter Blue has grown so big to, you know, they started out doing straps for Seikos, um, and now they're making them for Tudors. So, I mean, um, there's, there's quite a bit of, uh, you know, range when it comes to uh, their team and, and what they actually can provide. So um, a little bit about uh, the key common characteristics of this type of watch. I'd consider it a dive watch. Now, um, when you're looking for a dive watch, you're of course going to want some type of water resistance through some type of screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. This particular one is featured here on this gorgeous and ultimately comfortable uh, crafter blue uh, natural uh, rubber strap so um, with all that said uh, you know what let's go ahead and and actually get this piece in hand and take a closer look all right so let's get into it guys the Hyperion Ocean this is actually the new blue dial model um, and you know to kind of summarize what this thing is all about Essentially, it's a Swiss made diver, guys, Swiss made as you can see on the dial. So this does meet uh, the standards to be considered a Swiss made timepiece, which is quite impressive, um, honestly, in this day and age, especially when you consider that they could have easily not gone the Swiss made route, still put a Swiss made movement in it and whatnot. So I think it is nice that for their, uh, you know, of course, one of their first early offerings when it comes to a full watch that they that they did actually really target um, you know, I think by by adding that kind of value that a lot of people do look for in this market, I, I think that was nice. Um, now, as far as the aesthetic of this watch, it really blends kind of those iconic Italian and Japanese diver aesthetics, you know, built for professional saturation diving. Um, of course, now um, all modernized. So you can see there's a little bit of Panerai in the style when you and this the scale and the and the bezel here um, but then you also have a bit of of course the old 6105 you know the original uh, turtle um, with this case here and you can actually see the crown um, kind of this this watch was actually available under another uh, brand um, previously uh, a while back uh, undive I believe um, and now, uh, because of the success, obviously, of Crafter Blue, um, now it's just under the Crafter Blue line, uh, which is quite nice, with actually some changes and whatnot, which we'll go over as we kind of go through the video. Um, but one of the things that does remain is that really cool little trident, um, you know, signed crown there. Uh, really gorgeous. You can see this integrated helium escape valve. Guys, the just so you what i can't what i just want to scream about with this watch is this thing is so stinking comfortable i'm blown away this is the biggest most comfortable watch i've ever worn this is like the most comfortable watch somehow um but it's bigger than so many other watches that i've owned um it's insanely uh and i'm sure a lot of it has to do with this strap a lot of it has to do with the beautiful curvature on this case um you know blending those elements of course you know seiko they are the you know if they're definitely the architecture you want to uh, look at and pay homage to when it comes to larger watches that wear well um and then of course you know panerai they're they're, they're they're the big action watch. I mean, you see the, the, the you know, Panerai's on Stallone's wrist, uh, Jason Statham, and this thing feels like it should and could be easily, um, you know, on the wrist of anybody in any movie set because this thing, I, I just, it begs to be taken into the water. It, it's, it's nuts, guys. I'm really looking forward to getting this on wrist because having it in hand um, is really not giving you guys the full idea of, um, 
what this watch is really meant to do. So, um, you know, the nice thing is here, it's actually, you would think that with these specs, right, uh, the depth, as you can see, 600 meters water resistant, Swiss made, I mean, no expenses spared when it comes to the fit or finish on this beautiful case. You can see the high polished and then the nice uh, brushing there, really beautifully transitioned. A different take on it, right? They didn't go with a polished bevel. Um, they didn't go with polished side. They went fully polished on top, which actually do he does help to shrink the visual weight. Um, and then you do have these beautiful brushings on the side that actually, um, you know, help break the case up a little bit when you're looking at it from the side. So it's not as much of a big slab. Of course, all this beautiful contouring uh, does come into play as well. So really, really nice. Uh, the crystal here is a single dome. So you can see uh, there's a bit of distortion uh, when you get down into the really, really harsh angles. Um, but it is sapphire. Um, and then as far as the bezel goes, it is, oh yeah, oh that's nice, whew, can I make a little bit of back play I guess, um, well that's pretty negligible, I'd say that's pretty natural, it's not really back plates as much as it's when you get to this next click you do have a little bit of, you know, room to kind of set it in. So it's not as clicky, but of course the trade-off is it's actually quite smooth, even in gloves. You can see, uh, really easy to actuate. This uh, coin edge is beautiful and sits proudly above this gorgeous case. Now, um, you do also have inside, you have a Salita SW200. You won't be able to see it um, because it does have a solid case back, but it's it's kind of a hybrid case back because it's solid, but it actually is a display in that it actually displays um, the soft iron shield, which gives this anti-magnetic property. So when I said this thing should be an action movie, I wasn't kidding, guys. This thing, it just has it all. This is just a watch made for action. You can see they even have uh, some kanji there, which I think is nice, of course. <coughs> Excuse me, um, because they are taking pride in the Asian heritage of this watch, although it is Swiss made, they're not uh, hiding uh, behind that by any means, which I think is, is quite a bold move and a bold take. And I think that a uh, little display is really, really cool and interesting and something that I haven't really seen done. Um, so as far as the dial, it has this beautiful blue sunburst style, as you can see there. It has raised indices, the date at three o'clock, BGW9, Swiss Superluminova. Of course, you already know this is water resistant up to 600 meters, and believe me, you're gonna want, I just, I wanna put this thing on and jump to the lagoon right now, is uh, how, just how exciting this watch feels on wrist. Um, and then it has a nice 22 millimeter lug width, which, quite, which is quite versatile, and it comes with this beautiful vulcanized pure rubber strap, which is non-tapering. Um, and I think uh, fitting when it comes to uh, the particular style, of course, of this watch. But the nice thing is it does have some beautiful contours put in there to almost give you the illusion of a taper. Um, but still, um, of course, you're gonna need some heft underneath to keep this bad boy at bay on the wrist. So let's go ahead, get this piece All on right, the guys. wrist. All right, guys, so on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, you can see still wears quite large, but you know what? Uh, nothing crazy. Um, you know, for 45 millimeters in diameter with a 16.3 millimeter height and a 50 millimeter lug to lug, guys, this thing works like an absolute dream. I don't know how. I mean, on paper, uh, it's like, wow, that thing is going to be pretty big and overpowering. Even when you get some lens distortion, I feel like this is probably the way you would imagine it. But when you get it out here, you can see that it actually sits quite nice. Very secure, of course this strap is a huge part of that. Very, very soft and supple, but still uh, has a beautiful framework that it lays out to hold this timepiece at bay. And man, this thing, let me tell you guys, uh, when I was active duty uh, Marine Corps, this is totally, this could have totally been my thing. This could have been like my ultimate take it to the field run and gun watch. This thing 
is just gorgeous. Of course, the high polish finishes and whatnot, a little questionable as far as how tactical it would be. Um, but man, this thing is absolutely gorgeous and it just feels so tough. Um, and you know, and you know that it is because they did their homework. They went the extra mile. They, you know, you got the, you know, you know, basically saturation ready um, setup here. And this thing's gorgeous. And yeah, you know, it does have those brush strokes uh, elements of you know uh, the 6105. You know those uh, the Apocalypse Now Seiko Turtle. Um, and then of course that bezel is definitely has a pattern I feel. But I feel like it actually blends those elements really quite well. And the dial, I'd say even a little bit of kind of a Marine Master. Um, look to it, uh, if not uh, just 6105 in general. But I really do like this blue uh, dial here. As you can see, it is <clears throat> beautifully high contrast. So you get the really bright, vibrant blue, and then uh, when you're into the you know kind of the burst pattern there, in between the way the light shifts, it is really dark. It's a midnight blue, if not almost black when you look at it. Um, so this thing really pops. You don't necessarily even have to wear blue while you're wearing this thing. And I was a little bit concerned because I thought the black strap might be a little overpowering with the bright blue dial. But because the blue is such a cool kind of, uh, you know, that, that beautiful sunbrush finish there, uh, it does a great job of playing with the light and toning the watch down. Like, as you can see here at this angle, you almost don't even see any blue, um, so it actually flows really quite well, and you get a couple pops here and there. Hopefully, they'll offer something like a two-tone strap for this uh, in the future with maybe like a blue underpinning uh, to, to actually tie in just a little bit nicer, but I think as it is right now, of course, it just has that utilitarian feel and look. And guys, you have to, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. This thing wears like an absolute dream. Look, it's not going anywhere. It's just resting stoically on my wrist. Um, and right now I just want to hang my wrist off the side of a boat <laughs> and then jump in because this watch is just calling for the water. It's begging for it, guys. Um, surprisingly comfortable it just molds around your wrist you know um it's, i'd say it's probably even more comfortable than my seiko turtle reissue on a crafter blue molded rubber strap it just oozes personality um and of course would be right at home in an action movie i think it just begs to get wet guys whoa that's what <laughs> that's what she said um so <laughs> for any of you office fans out there uh model variants go um, there are black doll variants um, that you can get in stainless steel or a DLC bezel. Um, comparable models go. There's a lot on the market. You know, a lot of chunky 45 millimeter divers out there. But, you know, um, from micro to mainstream, it's a very popular size. But the Hyperion Ocean somehow hits a sweet spot that I really can't quite yet put my finger on, guys. This thing is just immaculate. But let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, into some low light transition and some closing thoughts. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, that BGW-9 is quite nice. Guys, that's gonna glow really great. Of course, I don't think it's some big hyper, you know, loom beast. They didn't just, you know, pile on the loom by any means, but it's a nice application of it. Nice wide indices, wide hands, everything's nice. There, you can even see a bit of a two-tone action on that seconds hand, uh, which is sweeping really nicely with that Swiss Salita movement. So let's go ahead and move into some low light transition because what I like to do here is really kind of show you guys what this watch is gonna look like in less than optimal lighting situations because you're not always going to be out in the middle of the field, in the middle of the summer. Sometimes you're going to be, you know, transitioning in and out of vehicle, in and out of your car, in and out of, uh, you know, a building or something like that. And, you know, those hot studio lights, they tend to do a great job showing you what something will look like out in broad daylight, uh, but you're not always going to be in optimal lighting conditions. So what I do here is I kind of give you a chance to kind of see this guy and the way that that dial is going to read. You can see there quite a matte finish if I get it right at this angle. And then you see the transition and the break. 
that bezel can take on because of uh, the beautiful fine brushing it almost can grab some darker tones almost like some gunmetal hues and whatnot depending on the lighting as you can see right there it wants to look a lot different especially since there's a lot of contrast coming off of that high polished case so a really nice kind of thoughtful trickery on their part but as you can see from the soft lighting aspect here really still a gorgeous 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 timepiece and so that's that's the craziest part about this whole thing is this thing is hot it's a great looking dive watch wears super comfortable it's just big it's bigger than honestly I would have, if I was gonna make a watch that I put it out on paper um, but man it's just it's hard not to fall in love with this thing because it just has so much personality. Um, it just has that action vibe. You know, the bottom line, this is a diver that really manages uh, to feel really special, uh, even in a really ultra saturated market, guys. We talked about it. Everywhere from mainstream to micro brand, 45 millimeter deep diving divers with vintage aesthetics. Um, yeah, those are huge. They're all the rage. Yes, smaller divers are trying to come back, but honestly, the reason why big chunky divers um, keep getting made is because they sell so damn well, guys. There's companies that all they do is make big chunky divers and they'll be around forever. So there's just something about the machismo that goes with that, right? Um, and I think Crafter Blue really nailed it on the head here with this great little mashup of Italian and Japanese. Um, it's, it's a sexy little mix there, guys. I mean, um, Italian and Japanese little uh, halfy. Let me tell you, this is this is nice. I'm, I'm digging that Hoppa half status here. I think it blends nicely. You're getting uh, you know all the strengths and none of the weaknesses, if you will, uh, to talk a little bit about some blade hybriding. So with all that said, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do a like. And if you're not, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.